It costs nothing to play, but I got something to say. Time for non and I. For this non and I, we're checking out Cursed Sight. It's a visual novel. It's up on Steam. That is where the demo is. I don't know if the full version's out yet, as of this recording, but uh, the demo itself lists three achievements. So we'll see how far it goes, I guess. Maybe they're ones that carry over if you save your game. And achievement unlocked. The journey begins. You can't see that. But anyway. Growing up poor, I had always watched with envy whenever kids in my neighborhood rode past on rickshaws. Today, I finally got my chance. I just wish the circumstances were a little different. Rickshaw noises. The rickshaw clattered along the gravel path, giving me a headache. Of course, the driver had to make things worse with his off-tune humming. This place might be called Melody Way, but that gave him no right to offend the very essence of music. That's cold. Well, I was there, the driver said without turning to face me. Eyes on the road, as they said. I would admire his professionalism, except he kept lowering the rickshaw for a breather. The drivers in my hometown could beat this guy to race with one arm, but that was a thing of the past now. East Tario was my new home, or prison more like. Mom and Dad, thank you for selling me to the temple. We love you more than anything in the world. Anything except for coins, it turned out. I bet they were spending that money for a holiday. As the rickshaw drove along, I passed stallkeepers shouting discount offers for their fruits and veggies. When one of the shopkeepers had his eyes turned, a couple of kids stole some apples from his basket. Such a thing would never happen back in West Taria. Bells hung all around the houses on Melody Way, jingling under the breeze. This must be why people called East Taria the City of Bells. The bells did sound soothing, at least for now. Give it a week and I would probably want to impale my eardrums with a toothpick. This is getting grim. The rickshaw slowed as we approached the building ahead. Its size dwarfed that of any other structure on Melody Way. This must be the East Tarian Temple. East Tarian's symbol patterned the window frames as if to banish my western origins. Okay. The driver put down his rickshaw. There will be seven gold coins. I pulled out the purse Mom had given me for the ride. She gave me five coins, and silver ones no less. Love you too, Mom. I avoided the driver's gaze as I showed him the purse. Should have known better than trust Westarians, the driver grumbled. Kid, I'm taking you to the gods. The driver was right about me being a kid, but then he should be an adult and let things pass. Instead, he grabbed my wrist and tried to yank me off the rickshaw. I wriggled my hand to try and break free, but to him, I probably felt about as strong as a dieting cat. The guards locked me up. I doubted my parents would bail me out. I heard executions were legal in East Taria. The thought made my legs go numb. I met the driver's grimace with one of my own. King okay. King Locke has business with me. If you want your coins, go talk to him. The driver let go of me, and now it was his turn to dodge my gaze. If he troubled the king over such a trivial matter, the temple might take his head as compensation. The driver snatched away my coins as well as the purse. He pushed me off the rickshaw, mumbled a few curses, and drove away. I brushed dust off my pants in an attempt to look cool, but in the truth, sweat had stained my palms despite the cold weather. I turned to face the road I had just passed. Despite all of this being my parents' fault, I still yearned to see them running after me, telling me how sorry they felt. They were, of course, nowhere in sight. I slapped my cheeks to snap out of it. Your new life started here, guy. I waded up to the temple doors, almost slipping on a rotten leaf on my way there. Two guards stood, barring the temple's entrance. Their six-foot stature allowed them to fit inside those heavy armor. Grammar's a little clumsy. I don't know if this was localized or what, but... Anyway, the Istaria symbol on their shoulder plates remind me they hailed from an unfamiliar culture. I swore the ground shook as one of the guards took a step toward me. The spear in his hand made me tremble. Those capes the guards wore fluttered in the wind, but these guys look more like villains than heroes to me. Go back to place else, boy. The guard shoot me off like a fly. A chance to explain myself would have been nice. I lifted my chin at the opportunity to show him up. King Locke invited me from West Tari to serve the temple, I said. Right, and slave then. Name? Sure, apology accepted, jerk. Guy. The other guard chimed in. Ah, yes, the king told us you were arriving. He's assigned you to help with looking after me own. He exchanged chuckles with, the chuckles with his colleague. Sucks to be you, kid. In you go. I waited to see if the guards would escort me. One of them dozed off on his feet, an ability he must have picked up during his years of service. 
The other guard filed his nails with his spear, just as the blacksmith had intended, no doubt. I stomped past him in an attempt to look tough, but I stepped too hard and rolled my ankle. As I limped past the front gates, I feared the guards might close them and squash me in a meat pie. I strode through the garden before doing a full lap around the courtyard. With several dozen doors around, I dared not enter a single one. I ducked under some of the lit windows in case anyone inside mistaken me for a thief. Yeah, the grammar's a little rough. With my head surveying back and forth, I soon bumped into a guard and fell onto my backside. The guard, still as a castle wall, tapped a spear against my chin. You picked the wrong place to rob, but I'm feeling generous, so crawl back to your little hole before I change my mind. I no longer had a home, or hole, or whatever this insult the scum wanted to hurl my way. You should just pierce my throat with that spear and be done with it. Guy, new servant. The guard clicked his tongue, but lowered his spear nonetheless. Follow me. At least he had the ever so wonderful heart to offer me guidance. I climbed back onto my feet and trailed him along the corridor, keeping it a distance in case he decided my attitude warranted just spanking. The guard led me to a dressing room filled with suits and dresses that might be worn or might be worth even more than a house. A set of crumpled clothes sat on the carpet, looking wonder completely out of place. Smeared with dirt, they could easily pass as towels used to wipe the wooden floors. The guard snatched these rags off the carpet and shoved them into my arms. Go get changed and hurry up about it. You're already late. Well, to be fair, I never expected to receive one of these expensive suits. I had that rickshaw driver to thank for my lateness. No thanks to no point in explaining myself now, though. I shuffled into a change room in the corner and slid the curtain closed. After stripping off my clothes, I checked out these garments the guard had handed me. Standard East Tarian red from top to bottom, with East Tar Tarius symbols stitched behind the shirt. Suddenly, the curtain slid open, and I blushed upon seeing the girl standing outside. Aside from my mother, not once had anyone from the opposite gender seen me in the nude. This girl's clothes matched the one I carried in my arms, so she, too, must be a servant. Those oversized pants she wore made her look about as feminine as a water barrel. Sexy water barrel! Her pigtails could have looked cute, but those flies circling over her unwashed hair looked ruined the look. The girl's gaze lowers toward my pants, where they would have been if I had a pair on. She let it aside, I walked out of it as if I had disappointed her somehow. Was I not the victim here? Miss Sandry! I hang the curtain back closed. Before showing the curtain off one of its hinges, I poked my head out to see if the guard had noticed. Good thing he had his head turned, sniffing a skirt on one of the sniffing at a skirt on one of the coat hangers. Um okay. I quickly slipped on my shirt and pants to avoid another intimate encounter. The shirt sleeves almost reached my fingertips, so I rolled them up and made my wrist look like spring rolls. I had mocked that girl's oversized, pa oversized pants earlier. Well, karma must be real, because they looked even bigger on me. I looked as if I had balloons crammed inside my pants. Insouciant trance with the MC Hammer pants. A pair of shoes dropped from under the curtains. I guess the guard had forgot about them earlier. These shoes had bells tied on the front to couple each of my steps with a jingle. I put on my shoes, and with the single, the single step I took to exit the dressing room, the left one came off. Cursing under my breath, I thrust my foot back into the shoe before trying to walk again. This time, I dragged my shoes along the carpet to keep them from sliding off. The heels still kept popping out, but it would have to do. I returned to the guard, who hurled, the skirt, hurled away the skirt he had been sniffing. He glared at me as if it was my fault he failed to keep his fetishes behind closed doors. The guard swirled around and stomped out of the dressing room. I assumed I was meant to follow him, so I did just that. The guard muttered complaints all the way to the end of the corridor. I stood before a set of doors embroidered in gold. The East Taria symbol sat in the middle, glittered, glittering under the sunlight. Whoever resided beyond those doors must be mighty important, so that ruled out any chance of this being my bedroom. The guard pointed to the doors. This is me Owen's room. Get in there and introduce yourself. Before I could ask any questions, the guard trotted off with a shudder. This Mion character s scared even a grown man, and now I must step in alone. Remind me to never send mom or dad any postcards. Bit of a non sequitur there. <sighs> I looked out at my East Tarian garbs. If I snuck out of the temple now, I could fit into the crowd, but with no way of earning a coin. I'd be forced to steal food like those children I saw earlier. I reached for the doors with my trembling hands. Just as I was about to knock, I heard muffled yells from coming from the other end. 
someone or something or someone banged against the doors from inside, making me dart back. Was me on me on inside that room right now? I foresaw meeting an eight-foot ma mammoth that dined on servants' limbs as a pastime. After whispering farewell to my arms and legs, I slid the doors open. Three bodies rolled out and crashed into my shins, making me stumble. The bodies untangled just enough for me to see a middle-aged woman with two guards wrestling to keep her under control. Upon spotting a knife in the woman's hand, I crawled away until my back hit the wall. The woman struggled to break free from the guard's grip. Give me back my boy, you monster. I f followed the woman's eyes to see who she was addressing. I'm guessing you're me on? Lots of bells. Her girl sat on her knees in the middle of the room. She had both hands resting in her on her lap as if unaware of the chaos unfolding before her. The hat she wore came attached with a veil, but she should still be able to see what was going on. The girl sat on a carpet with an East Taria symbol that almost covered the entire room. Considering the doors outside looked so fancy, this room was much smaller than I had anticipated. On the far end was a veranda with railings that reminded me of prison bars. Cabinets filled the walls on either side of the room. Their circular handles resembled eyes spying in from another dimension. The guards lifted that knife-wielding woman onto her feet. Me out is East Aria's treasure. By the king's orders, you're under arrest. The woman thrashed and screamed as the guards hauled her away. So this girl must be Mion. Judging from her height, she must be no older than ten, around my age. In other words, why should I be scared of some kid? I had no idea if Mion was looking at me thanks to that veil covering her face. As I edged toward her room, smoke came out of nowhere to sting my eyes. I gazed down and spotted incense burning in front of Mion's knees. Waving the smoke off my face, I stepped through the doors. The bells on Mion's hat clanged as she looked up. She also had this large bell tied around her neck like a collar on a pet. Mion tilted her head, perhaps startled by my unfamiliar face. That guard did order me to introduce myself, so I might as well. Name's Guy. Mion slumped onto the floor. Did she finally fall unconscious from the shock earlier? Talk about a delayed reaction. I worried for Mion's well-being, but more importantly, I feared for mine. If the guards had thought I had harmed her in any way, well, I had a good run. Mion opened her mouth and spoke to me for the first time. Blankets. Third cabinet to the left. Oh. What, did my introduction suck so much that she would rather go to sleep? Shaking my head, I walked up to the third cabinet on the left wall. I pulled the door open and indeed found a blanket tucked inside. Even the blanket had gold patterns running along its edges. What a spoiled brat. After flicking off a worm crawling on top, I pulled out the blanket and threw it over me on, covering her from head to toe. Cannot breathe, came her muscled, muffled voice. Yeah, yeah. I lowered the blanket down to her neck. Her breathing seemed steady. But with that veil on, I had no way of knowing if she had fallen asleep. Hey, me on, I whispered as the test were re received no response. Stupid, fat, ugly me on. Still nothing. She, sh she sure fell asleep fast considering someone had tried to stab her only moments ago. As I exited the room, Mion's voice came trailing after me. Never speak to me that way again. Oh, crap. So she did hear. I stepped out and shut the doors behind me. That knife-wielding lady from earlier disappeared from view, replaced by a trio of servants sweeping the corridor. All three of them had swung their rooms in sync, as if they had no consciousness of their own. After I introduced myself to the servants, they shared with me the daily joys of being a slave. Testing food for poison, battling venomous spiders, you name it. Watch out, world, for my future shone as brightly as the sun on a stormy night. It's achievement too. Oh, exposition? Born with a cursed sight, the treasure of a nation. Somewhat animated. I like the uh, I like the costume design. It's Eastern with some flair. Where you get lyrics and like VA names? No. <laughs> Night came and a servant escorted me into a storage room crammed with sleeping servants as well as crawling bugs. 
Stacked against the walls were boxes that piled up to the ceiling. I pray they were empty. Otherwise, if these boxes collapsed, the temple guards would be having servant pancakes for breakfast. The place reeked of dust as well as sweat, but half these servants never even bothered to shower before hitting the sack. So, which bed is mine? I asked the servant who had led me here. Any of them. Yeah, I should have known. A uh, bed sheet near me appeared to be unused, but just as I reached for it, another servant swooped in and snatched it from my hands. What, did you write your name on it? I asked, gritting my teeth to refrain from punching him. With a scowl, the servant pointed at a wet patch on the bed sheet. This guy pee on it as a marking? Oh, okay. My bad, Ben. These bed sheets were so thin they might as well not be there at all. Anyway. But everybody had one, so I felt uneasy being the odd one out. I spotted another unused bed sheet in the corner. This time I dove at it to ensure nobody would beat me to my prize. Maybe I should pee or spit on it as well just to be safe. I crawled into the bed sheet, and before I could even close my eyes, a pair of mosquitoes buzzed around my ear. Shaking my head, I rolled to one side and covered my ear with the bed sheet. It muffled the buzzing somewhat, I suppose. After shutting my eyes, fatigue took over and I collapsed into sleep, which meant the mosquitoes scored themselves a real feast. Approaching footsteps caused the wood floor to creak. A hand gripped my shoulder and nudged me awake. I opened my eyes and found a servant with his face far too close to mine for my liking. Hey, go sweep the king's throne room, he said. Cool, good morning to you too. But I checked the schedule last night. I was supposed to help prepare breakfast, I said. Well, the schedule's just changed. I'll prepare breakfast in your stead. The servant dropped a broom into my hands. I bet he just wanted to steer clear of the king and decided to pick up the new guy. He thought I could be pushed around easily? Well, he might be right, because I got up to do his order. Best to avoid trouble until I knew my way around. Speaking of which, where is the throne room anyway? The servant rolled his eyes and pointed toward a set of doors at the end of the hall. By the way, there's a trial going on, so need to, no need to knock. Just do your job and keep out of sight. I bumped shoulders with the servant on my way out of the storage room. A thank you would have been nice, but I would have had better luck. But I would have better luck waiting for the sky to rain gold coins. As I stalked toward the throne room. I scratched my sw swollen arms and neck. Those mosquitoes really showed me no mercy in it last night. These bites between my fingers made me want to light the storage room on fire. It's a bit extreme. I arrived outside this ki the king's chamber. The pair of doors here looked bigger than the ones Mion had. Does that mean the king was even weirder than Mion? If so, I might be better off turning into a mosquito food back in the storage room. The doors groaned as I pulled them open, destroying any hope I had of being discreet. After taking a deep breath, I walked in. There he was, at the end of the room, the king of East Taria. He sat behind a cur curtain that stretched from wall to wall, but his silhouette alone made my legs quiver. Stone pillars formed a line evenly on either side, holding the ceiling in place. Paintings of men and women with crowns hung on these pillars. They must be the kings and queens from past generations. The knife-wielding lady from yesterday stood on a red carpet before the king. A couple of guards blocked the path behind her. One of them kicked the back of her knee, forcing her to kneel in front of the king. I spotted bruises on the woman's arms, and her gray locks looked more roughed up than yesterday, too. The guards must have abused her before this trial even began. One of the guards glanced toward me as if he read my thoughts. My heart thudded as I carried on with brooming the floor. Pay me no mind, folks. I just work here. King Loke, there here's the woman who assaulted me on, one of the guards said. The woman bowed until her forehead touched the carpet. Me odds cursed my boy to his death. I ask only for justice. Mion's power is common knowledge among our nation, Loke said. Your son knowingly flipped her veil open. He said Mion's power was common knowledge, but I, for one, knew nothing about it. Did that woman's kid die from gazing into Mion's eyes? The mother began to sob. My boy was only eight. Of course he'd be curious. We should have that monster blindfolded or blinded altogether. Loke drummed his fingers across his armrest. Foolishness! Cover Mion's eyes and we seal her powers as well. She's more valuable to the nation than all of you odds put together. Even the guards trade to frowns upon hearing those words. These guards have been treating me like a sewage rat, and now the king just cast them into my category. Welcome to the sewers, folks. Hope you like the smell. Send this woman to the guillotine, the king said. She shall serve it as an example to our nation. With brows still arched, the guards lifted the woman by her armpits. As they dragged her away, I thought she would beg for mercy, but all she did was smile. There's no need to feel alone, sweetie. Mommy's coming to you soon. As I left the room, 
I squeezed the broom's handle to stop my hands from shaking. East Taria meant business when it came to their treasure. Yesterday, I threw a blanket over Mion's face and called her names. If she had reported it, I might have been killed. Doc, I might have developed a case of Mion phobia. From now on, I must keep a distance from her at all times. Maybe I should get a fishing rod to hand her things from afar. Tears welled in my eyes as the faces of my parents surfaced in my mind. I wiped the sleep across my eyelids. No way would I miss those two people who had sold me here. I did, however, worry for my baby sister. She played no part in any of this. I wondered what my parents would tell her when I, she grew up. They might say I died in an accident or simply claim I never existed. The thought made me tear up again. I clenched my fist to rinse my sadness away with anger. My mind seemed to be all over the place this morning. I blamed it on my lack of sleep. Maybe I should go hide in the change room and sneak in a quick, na quick nap. I heard bells ringing in the main hall. A series of jingles strung together produced a soothing melody. Curiosity won me over, and I headed for the hall to take a peek. Hi. A woman was dancing alone on the stage. She had dozens of belts, bells tied around her arms, and as she twirled, these bells produced music that echoed across the room. My parents has one to had once told me about these performers. Belstresses, I believe they were called. East Taria's emblem occupied the back wall, uh, partially obscured by a pair of red pillars. Potted plants formed, around a circle, formed a circle around the stage and exuded a fragrance that enveloped the hall. Several other servants slacked off from their duties to watch their performance, but most of them paid this belstress no attention, so I guess she must be a regular here. A group of ten people watched the performance from the front row. The men wore suits ironed many times over, while the women donned earrings almost as big as their heads. They must be the belstress's real audience. Once the belstress finished her act, she bowed at the applauding crowd. A guard then walked in to greet the guests. He was all smiles as he escorted them off to another area of the temple. These rich folks probably gave the guard tips on their way out. I can think of no other explanation for his friendliness. Heck, if I had, if I too had coins to spare, I'd make the guards play fetch, lick my shoes, and call me Master Guy. As the belstress stepped down from the stage, I heard footsteps running toward her. Even without turning to look, the ringing bells told me it was Mion. She ran pretty fast for someone who was too lazy to take out her own blanket. Mion dove into the belstress's arms, almost bully her over. Sasa! Sasa! Having heard about Mion's cursed sight, I would scream if she clung that close to me. Either the Sasa lady knew nothing about the curse, or she was feeling really lucky. Mion, smile when you say hi, remember? Sasa reached under Mion's veil to pinch her cheeks and curl them into a smile. Can you come tonight? Mion slurred, Sasa looked over her cheeks so she could speak properly. Can you come tonight, please? Sasa patted Mion's head. Just for a bit. Just for a bit, okay? Mion nodded frantically, making the bells in her hat chime in protest. After giving Sasa a hug, Mion retreated back toward her room. As Sasa spun to leave, our eyes met for a moment. The shimmering stage lights made her hair and skin glisten. Sasa beamed at me, and her, my cheeks flushed as I averted my gaze. Girls really annoyed me sometimes, to be honest. Doll, he's got a crush. Well, time to clean Mion's room. Keep a cool guy. Avoid on cact and... Uh, uh, on cact. Avoid eye contact and live to slave another day. All right then. Time to pull these doors open. Mion opened her mouth the second I entered the room. Her earlier chat with Sasa must have put her in a talkative mood. Three, uh, three oranges, one smaller than the others. Mion said. Two apples, four pears, cold water, fifteen incense sticks, two half burned. I gave her a blank stare in return. Go on, Mion said. Her commanding tone scared me to stumbling out of the room. She had no reason to throw such a random list at my face unless it was the toy with me. I should instead with return with three pieces of animal turds, one from yours sincerely, a bottle of piss and three jars of roaches. What a nice guy. A fellow servant walked by the corridor. I asked him just what kind of drugs Mion had been talking. The fruits and stuff. Those are for her rituals, the servant said. He shrugged at my confused glib face. You must be new here, I'm guessing. Mion regularly performs spells that can change the future. If Mion truly possessed such a power, that would explain why Loke treasured her so much. Whatever. Some fruits, water, and a bunch of incense. Got it. The servant leaned in as if frightened Mion might hear from inside a room. Mion's real fussy about her numbers. You should ask her again and listen more closely. That meant I need to speak with Mion one more time, just great. When I walked back into Mion's room and asked her to repeat the list as expected, she lectured me about my lack of attention. After picking myself steam up off the carpet, I headed out to collect what Mion had asked for. I returned 
to place the fruit basket, water bowl, and incense tray in front of her. There. You're welcome. The fruits and incense are placed the wrong way around. These are the basics. They said me on was had the cursed sight. Maybe I should show her my cursed mouth. A torrent of insults threatened to spew out, and I barely managed to swallow them back in. Kids got a temper. Oh, Mistress Mion, please forgive this humble servant for not possessing such common knowledge. I swapped the fruits and incense around, because Mion sure showed a t intention of moving them herself. Mion leaned towards the bowl and whispered a chant. The water began to swirl inside the bowl. Those fruits I had prepared also bounced and rolled inside their basket. Eventually, the entire floor began to start to shake, forcing me to lean against the wall for support. Maybe I should run from the room, but if this ritual could put my life at risk, Mion would have warned me about it. Oh, wait. You don't care for me about as much as someone might worry about a pillow. Silly me. A minute later, Mion ceased her chants and the fruits finally settled. The floor had also stopped shaking, but my knees continued to quake out of fear. Three days of rain starting from tonight, Mion said. That should help the families with their crops. I guess she was predicting the result of her ritual. Mion slipped a hand under the veil of the Sajer Temple. Her lips looked pa as pale as her sweat-stained cheeks. I put it at the bowl of water sitting before her. Maybe you should take a sip. It'll make you feel better. Mion rubbed her temple harder as if my words had worsened her headache. The sacred water belongs to the goddesses. Learn some respect. Actually, I filled that bowl with a tab in the kitchen. Fine, so Mion had powers, but they gave her no right to mock me. Next time, I should scoop up some toilet water for Mion and her goddesses. Just as I considered arguing back, someone knocked on the door. That must be Sasha. Mion lead their feet, spilling the bowl of water. I guess those goddesses she spoke of would have to lick that sacred water off the carpet now. Mion yanked the door open, and on the other side sh stood Sasa. A lady should act more gentle, Sasa chuckled, patting Mion's hat. As Mion pulled Sasa into the room, once again, Sasa and I crossed gazes. No need to worry about him, he's new here, Mion said. Sure, just treat the new guy like one of those lanterns hanging along the veranda. Servants had no feelings or anything, right? Sasa grinned. Lucky you, Mion. He has a pretty cute face. My face heated up like, well, like one of those lanterns hanging along the veranda. Like I said, girls really annoyed me sometimes. Mion puffed her cheeks. He's so stupid. I mean, silly, though. Just now, he just asked me to drink the sacred water. Sasa was the first person to smile at me at this temple. I wanted nothing more than to give her a good impression. Thank you, Mion. Bless you for crushing my one and only dream. Sasa tapped a finger over her lip. Oh my, drinking the water is forbidden? I had no idea either. How foolish of me. Mion waved her hands nervously. Did that yeah, foolish? I guess, I mean, it's understandable, I think. As I googled at the sight of Mion flustering, Sasa gave me a wink. This lady and I would get along just fine. Sasa lowered onto her knees, and Mion climbed onto her lap before resuming her ramble. I saw a roach in my room this morning. It was orange, I swear. I tried catching it so I could show you, but it flew out the window. Sasa pulled a comb from her pocket and used to straighten Mion's pigtail. Girl shouldn't be running around picking up bugs. Did you catch them when you were little? Mion asked. I, well, yes I did. Oh, oh, and I heard King Lo singing in the toilet yesterday. It's really funny. Sasa nodded and gave occasional replies as Mion continued to flap her gums. Mion let out a few yawns while she talked. She put a hand over her mouth to hold them back, but each yawn came out louder than the last. Sasa massaged Mion's shoulders. The king told me you had to perform a ritual today. You better get some sleep. Mion climbed off Sasa's lap and shook her head. I must admit her pouting face made my heart stir. Just a little, mind you. Sasa rose and put her hands on her hips. A girl needs her beauty sleep. She shot me a glance. That's how you make the boys fall for you. Who needs boys? Mion clung onto Sasa's arm. I'm going to marry you, Sasa. Sasa rubbed her forehead against Mion's ear. Stop being silly and go to sleep. I fell for your cute act last time, but it's not happening again. Mion let out a whining noise that made me want to hug her. Eventually, she relented and gave a nod. I took that as a signal for me to pull out her blanket from the closet. Of course, she scrunched her lips at me for trying to help. Sasa tucked me on into bed and held her hand until she fell asleep, which only took about a minute. These rituals must really take a lot out of her. 
with me on a sleep, I puff my chest out to look, try and look manly. Let me escort you to the temple gates. I hated my voice for cracking as those words came out. Oh my, what a gentleman. Sasa pinched me on the cheek. Her fingers felt so slender and warm. I wonder if she would let me sit on her lap too. Lude. As I guided Sasa through the corridor, the silence gnawed at me, and I tried to strike up a conversation. You know about Beyond's eyes? I hear they're cursed or something. Not sure if it's real or not, though. Dear voice, please stop cracking for just one sentence. It's real, Sasa said. Anyone who gazes into her eyes will die on the same week. Her parents were the first victims. Oh, that sucks. I was hoping Sasa would laugh at me for believing such a myth, but now I regret it asking at all. Boy, I sure knew how to charm ladies with my choice of topics. I should have talked about how those garden flowers were no match for her beauty. Sasa spun around to face me. Mion never asked for those powers. Please, treat her like you would anyone else. She cupped my hand in both of hers. Her voice sounded softer than usual, and her serious tone forced me to nod. As Sasa looped her arms around me, her aroma and warmth made my head swirl. If Mion wanted to marry Sasa, she would have to fight me first. That's all I ask, guy. Sasa said, the first person to smile at me in Eastaria, and now the first to address me by name, too. Just ten more years until I became an adult. Please, Sasa, lock yourself in a time capsule and wait for me. Sasa, oh, they've got like little snow glow light things going on. Sasa let go of me, and as we resumed walking, she donned a smile that I showed in the lanterns hanging overhead. Had I known it would snow, I would have worn more clothes. Oh yeah, that's right, they did say the weather was cold. And when Sasa said those words, I surveyed up and down her clothing. She narrowed her eyes at me. Did your mind just go in the gutter? What? what? No. I peered out in the snow to hide my red face from Sasa. Considering the cold weather here, I should have known it would snow once in a while. Whenever it snowed back home, I used to build snowmen and stick carrots on top for the nose. If I dared steal a carrot here, the guards might cut off my finger and use that for the snowman's nose instead. There are the gates, I said. Good night, Miss Sasa. Sasa slapped me across the back. Cut that mist stuff out, but good night, Sai. Sasa dropped by again a week later, and I just happened to be cleaning out Mion's room at the time. I secretly pumped my fist, feeling luckier than someone finding a bag of gold in the urinal. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't be all about piss gold. Anyway. Mion rested her head in Sasa's lap, smiling as Sasa waved the bells on her wrist to produce a melody. I would consider burying the cursed sight for a day if it meant I could swap places with Mion. For now, I pretended to wash this wall for the 15th time in the past hour. If I kept scrubbing, the wall might turn into a glass. I wanted to spit at the wall just so I'd have an excuse to wipe it again and stay at Sasa's presence. Look what I got you, by the way. Sasa pulled out a bell from the bag sitting beside her. The jewelry adorning this bell glittered under the lantern's, lantern's glow. Mion rose to her knees and accepted the bell. After giving Sasa a hug, she waved the bell and listened to it jingle. Sasa turned to me with a smug face. And that's how you win a girl's heart. My pulse raced every time Sasa spoke to me. I rambled off her response to hide my nervousness. Right. Cool bell. Sasa and Mion shook their heads as if to say boys would never understand. Mion then said to me, You were supposed to be washing the dishes half an hour ago. Dear Mion, thank you for exposing me and making my face redder than those apples I always collected for you. Way to try to keep Sasa for yourself. Do they sell these bells in town? Mion asked Sasa. Yes, and all kinds of other things. You should check it out sometime, Sasa said. Mion lowered her head. King Lok would never allow it. Now I knew why I'd never seen Mion leave the temple, even if I was not allowed out for shopping once a week. Let's sneak out tonight, Sasa said. Mion squeezed her dress. You'll get in trouble if we get caught. Just for half an hour, Sasa winked. If you fear the consequences, you'll never get anything done. I could look out for guards or something. As soon as those words left my mouth, I regretted them. Sure, I wanted to impress Sasa, but not if I had to sign my will in the process. Sasa knitted her brows. That's sweet, guy, but I refuse to get you in trouble. Just leave it to me. Oh, okay, cool. I knew not, I knew not what else to say. Sasa's words reminded me that I was a mere slave, as if I had the right to make any calls. Hey, want to go under the plants with me? Sasa asked, making my heart thump. Oh, I could see it now. She and I would reach for a water spray at the same time, causing our fingers to touch. In time, our love would blossom just like the flowers we watered. <laughs> Sasa is asking me, Mion said. Oh. With their lips curled like a slice of watermelon, Mion grabbed Sasa's hand and dragged her out of the room. 
I guess Sasa was referring to those plants in the main hall. Should have known she was the one watering them. No way it could have been some guard singing to himself as he sprinkled the petals with the spray. Ugh, the image made me want to throw up. But, oh, Sasa. Never, bo never before had I met a maiden with such a pure heart. Let me dream up some poems about her while I went to wash the dishes. That night, a fellow servant bullied me into doing his groceries. I dashed across Melody Way, bumping into more villagers than I could count. One of them threatened to hit me, but I claimed to be the king's favorite servant, and he left me be. Two. One. None of that mattered now. I needed to show, uh, know how Sasa and Mion's mission turned out. Neither of them had appeared on Melody Way. I took that as a bad sign, and I prayed I had simply failed to spot them among the crowd. Still, I at least should have been able to hear their ringing bells as they walked by. Right now, I could only hear that drunk guy in the corner yabbering about his premonition of East and West Taria going to war. As I bought some pears and checked off the last item on my shopping list, the grocery lady said I needed a shower. All this running did leave me trenched in sweat, but whatever. I ran back to the temple, only taking short breaks when my lungs threatened to explode. Back at the temple at last. Spa after sparing a moment to catch my breath, I dumped off my groceries and trotted straight for Mion's room. Just as I was about to knock on the door, I heard voices coming from inside. This is why I was against it. The doors muffled Mion's words, but I could still hear her erratic breathing. That is not how you spell erratic. What's going to happen to you? I've known King Loke for many years. It'll be okay, Sasa said. So I heard Mion sniffles. I felt as if someone was pinching my heart with tweezers. The guards must have caught me on at Sasa in their act. Then, I'm, I should have helped, even if it meant displeasing Sasa. Instead, I obsessed over how I could impress her by obeying her every word. Well played, guy. As I reached for the doors, but guilt caused me to pull back. Mion would hate me to hate to have me see her cry anyway. The memory of Loke passing on that death sentence had given me several nightmares of myself on the guillotine. Now, Sasa must answer to the king. The possibilities almost made me forget how to breathe. It would be like headless chicks. And I think that's it. They've established drama. Oh, let's jump ahead. Switch with me, I said to the servant who had been assigned to the room, uh, who had been assigned to the bro to broom the king's chamber. The servant mur murmured something about following the rules. I dug my nails into her shoulders and leaned in close enough to touch her nose. Sass is in there with King Loke right now. If anything happens to her on her watch, I s on your watch, I swear, I don't know what I'll do. Uh, okay, let's swap then. The servant's eyes started to the water. Only then did I realize I had been shaking her. Chill out, dude. Once I let go, she handed me her broom and shuffled off. Damn it, I had better go and apologize to her later. The sleepless guy had always been too grumpy for even his own liking. After slapping my cheeks to wake myself up, I headed into the throne room. Sasa sat on her knees before Loke, who, as always, remained hidden behind his curtain. Perhaps the separation was what allowed him to issue those death, threat death sentences so heartlessly. Or maybe he just had no heart at all. I insisted on taking me on outside. The blame lies solely with me, Sasa said, her head lowered at the undeserving king. Despite her predicament, not one did she stumble on her words. That was the Sasa I knew and loved. You've met her twice. You've no need to defend me on, Loke said. I'd never bring harm to our nation's mightiest tool. A tool, he said? I squeezed my hands against the room, win wincing as several splinters dug into my flesh. Mion sensed joy whenever Sasa paid a visit, and then loneliness after she left. A tool could never comprehend such feelings. Sasa, you two are of good use to me. Our guests are rather fond of your performances, Loke grunted. I'll let things slide this time, but your next blunder shall be your last. Know that you're replaceable like the, less, the rest. Loke, you made the right choice, I thought, but my shaking knees reminded me of my helplessness. If the king ordered for Sasa's beheading and I tried to interfere, he might force me to pull the guillotine lever just for laughs. After bowing at the king, Sasa rose and spun to leave the room. Our eyes met, but she exited without saying a word. To Loke's knowledge, Sasa and I had nothing to do with each other. Probably best for things to stay that way. For the first time, I stood alone with the chamber of Loke. Alone in the chamber with Loke. Though he said nothing to me, I still felt my palms sweating up. I swept the carpet as fast as I could, praying Loke would pay afford me no attention. My king, nothing beat a nap under the morning sun. Why not give it a try rather than wasting your royal saliva talking to the likes of me? With my cleaning done, I managed to escape the chamber unscathed. Sasa stood in the, in the corridor with her back pressed against the wall. She had both hands cupped over her chest, finally betraying a hint of her anxiety. 
The sight of Sasa flustering made me frown in disappointment. Nothing ever seemed to stir, Sa stir Sasa, and I had hoped for this image of her to remain untainted. I wanted to punch myself for having such a selfish wish. When Sasa noticed me, she smiled to act tough for my sake. She bent down to stretch my cheek. Right now, yeah, right now, in my eyes, she looks as small as a kitten. I imagine she might cry alone in her room later, but I lacked the courage to speak up about it. Tell me, Aunt Mio, and I'm okay, she said, as Sasa said, still smiling. And how about you? Really, I'm fine, silly. There's no need to look so pale. Now that she mentioned it, my cheeks did feel cold. An outsider like me ended up more scared than someone directly involved. That must, this must be the difference between a kid and an adult. You're amazing, I blurted out and immediately blushed. Sasa patted my head. Why would you think that? Y you always know how to act, and you never say the wrong thing. That is the furthest from the truth, Sasa chuckled, and her soft tone told me she was hiding something. Whatever it was, I sensed asking would be like crashing a wagon into a brick wall, and I would rather keep our relationship dent-free. Sasa, no doubt, had questions for me as well. Every servant had a dark past to hide, yet Sasa never forced that out of me. I still had so much to learn from her. If only you could rule this nation, Sasa. I'm sick of serving a king like that, I said. Sasa tapped a finger over my lips. Watch your words when you're in the temple. I nodded, and Sasa lowered her finger. People are more complex than you think, guy. King Loke once had a kinder heart. I imagined Loke helping elderly across the street and feeding food to the poor. That seemed about as likely as Mion offering me praise for my work. When I first started performing, I played in clubs that paid me with bronze, some nothing at all, Sasa said. King Loke discovered and hired me in the temple. I've always been grateful for that. You sure we're talking about the same king? He's been through more than you might think. Never try and read another person's mind, Sasa bumped her forehead against mine. Let it go, guy. Enjoy being a kid while you're still one. Sasa extended her hand. I coiled my fingers around hers, and she let me hold her hand all the way to the, up to the temple entrance. Sasa's hand felt cold, even by East Tarian standards. Look must have drained all the warmth out of her. I squeezed her fingers in hope of warring her a touch, and she beamed at me in return. Though Sasa had told me to enjoy childhood, I wish I could transform into an adult tomorrow. Being surrounded by all these grown-ups made me feel about as useful as that shattered lantern by the wall. And I think we'll cut it there. That's Cursed Sight, and there's more coming, but it's quite a bit of demo. Uh, neat little visual novel. I like that this kind of jumping between characterization moments. I don't know if there's any filler beyond this between each section, but um, yeah, it seems all right. Definitely uh, plays up the cute and the relationship aspect, but you know, what do you expect? It's pretty straightforward. Not much uh, on the options front either, but eh. I like the art style, and I kind of like the familiar but not qu not quite uh, setting they've got going for it. So yeah, Cursed Sight demo is up on Steam. Check it out if you like. If not, well, you just listen to a lot of me. A lot. Thanks for watching. Top vid's old, bottom vid's new, everything else pretty self-explanatory. Big button in the middle goes to my website. There's words there, other stuff too. Check it out. Later.